Your doctor has prescribed you ivermectin for preventing or treating COVID-19. Is it safe? The FDA does not approve the use of ivermectin for the treatment or prevention of COVID-19, but your doctor wants you to take it. Is it safe? Welcome to this video. I'm Dr. Rick Kelly, a practicing physician with over 30 years of experience in primary care. In this video, I'm going to discuss a bit of the history of ivermectin, how it's used, and I'm gonna cover what the Federal Drug Administration and the published medical literature have to say about whether it's safe. And finally, I'll talk about how drugs become FDA approved and what is off-label drug use. A bit of medical jargon. In medicine, we use the word indication, which means a condition that makes a particular treatment or procedure advisable. For example, Streptococcal infection is an indication for penicillin, or we could say that penicillin is indicated for strep throat. When the COVID pandemic began sweeping the globe in late 2019 into 2020, researchers and medical experts scrambled to find medications that would effectively and safely treat it. The drug ivermectin, long touted as a wonder drug whose discoverers were awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine, was discovered late in the 1970s by researchers in Japan. Initially, it was used as a veterinary drug and quickly became and remained a billion dollar drug for over 20 years for treating certain parasitic infections in animals. In the late 1980s, it received FDA approval for two indications and only two indications, the treatment of onchocerciasis or river blindness, which in the 1980s was the second leading cause of blindness globally, and strongyloidiasis, which is a disease caused by a type of intestinal worms in humans. Ivermectin was also found to be effective against filariasis, a tropical disease that causes elephantiasis. But even though it's been used for decades for this indication, I see no evidence that the FDA ever approved it for elephantiasis. It was such a safe and effective medication that health agencies around the world gave it to people with little or no education or medical knowledge to take and administer to others. Since then, it has continued to be used for a wide variety of indications in humans and animals. But what does the FDA say about the use of ivermectin for COVID? An FDA webpage for consumers gives reasons why you should not use ivermectin for COVID-19 and some of the things that they think you should know about using ivermectin. First, it's not approved. As noted, the FDA only approves ivermectin tablets for two diseases, though it has been used internationally for decades for elephantiasis, which is not approved. It's also commonly used in the United States for difficult to treat cases of scabies, head lice, body lice, and pubic lice. None of those are approved uses, though the Centers for Disease Control, which is part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, lists the appropriate doses for these off-label uses. Next, they point out that taking large doses of ivermectin can be dangerous and cause serious harm. The package insert for ivermectin states that dosages that amount to 50 to 250 times the normal dose have been found to be toxic and potentially fatal in animal studies. The FDA also recommends getting ivermectin when prescribed from a legitimate source. That is always a good idea. They caution against diverting medications prescribed for animals for use in humans. They state that you may have heard that it's okay to take large doses of ivermectin and that that is wrong or well, that is true. It's never a good idea to take prescription medications without consulting your physician. There is a potential for drug interaction with an interaction with the blood thinner warfarin being the most significant. If your doctor has prescribed ivermectin for you, be aware that there are multiple reports of potentially severe medical complications when patients with loa loa, called African eye worm, take ivermectin. Individuals with high levels of this microscopic worm in their bodies reacts to the proteins released when the worms die. This well-known reaction has complicated the attempts to eradicate river blindness and elephantiasis in some regions of West Africa. So for people who live in areas where loa loa is endemic, ivermectin use for any reason can be very dangerous. So what else do we find? In 2002, a clinical trial was done using escalating high doses in healthy adults, and they found that doses up to 10 times the normal dose were well tolerated with no indication of toxicity. 
In another randomized controlled trial in 2016, the oral dose of ivermectin was found to be safe and equally effective as the topical form. An opinion piece appearing in the Journal of Drugs Dermatology in 2016 discussed the 25 years of clinical experience with ivermectin and pointed out that it has been used to treat parasitic diseases in animals with, quote, a good safety profile, end quote. In 2017, in the journal Trends in Parasitology, titled Ivermectin, Old Drug, New Tricks, it was pointed out that ivermectin has a wide safety margin, which means there's a large difference between the therapeutic dose and the toxic dose. They did note that there is a rare genetic mutation that causes some mammals to be susceptible to neurological side effects. I only found one reference for two cases where this occurred in humans. In a 2011 article in the Proceedings of the Japan Academy, they compared ivermectin to the beneficial impact that penicillin and aspirin have had on the well-being of mankind based on its versatility, safety, and the beneficial impact it's had on and continues to have. The primary adverse reaction to ivermectin use throughout the medical literature seems to occur due to the parasitic diseases being treated. The FDA's job is to ensure that prescription drugs marketed in the U.S. are safe and effective for specific uses. But the FDA doesn't do the testing. A company or organization applies for approval of a drug to the FDA, where a team of physicians, statisticians, pharmacologists, and other scientists review and approve or deny the application. The application process is complicated and expensive and includes months or years of clinical trials that yield data on whether a drug has the effect it's supposed to have for a specific indication. The application also includes the proper dose, side effects, and how the body eliminates it and other data, and this information ends up in the package insert. The average cost of a new drug application is around $20 million, but the FDA doesn't foot that bill for testing. The fact that a drug is not FDA approved for a certain indication may mean that the FDA panel denied an application. But in many cases, especially for an inexpensive generic drug, it only really means that no one has applied for that approval for that specific use. It may well have been shown to be both safe and effective for another use since it's perfectly legal for physicians to prescribe medications for off-label use when they believe that the benefit outweighs the risk. Off-label use means using a medicine for something other than what it's approved. An estimated one-fifth of all prescriptions in the U.S. are off-label uses. As far as I can tell, as of July 2021, only one of the treatments commonly used for hospitalized patients has full FDA approval for treating COVID-19. Most others have not been approved or only have emergency use authorization. That doesn't mean that they are not safe and effective. Why aren't drugs approved if they are safe and effective for diseases other than what they are approved for? Suppose a drug is still under patent and there is money to be made by marketing for a new indication. In that case, a pharmaceutical company may invest the time and expense to go through the application process for an additional indication. But if doctors are already prescribing it in droves or the medication is already generic, then there is no financial incentive to go through the process. So ivermectin is not approved for COVID. Will it ever be? I doubt it. Is it safe to use? There is overwhelming evidence that ivermectin is safe for its indicated uses, as well as many off-label uses. Is ivermectin effective for either the prophylactic use or treatment of COVID-19? Some say yes, others say no. I think that is something for you to discuss with your doctor. Thank you for watching. If this video has been helpful to you, please click the like button and give it a thumbs up. Take care.